everybody, it's me, the Student Witch. Happy Tuesday. Um, I was just thinking about something that I was thinking about this morning. <laughs> um, I, I woke up this morning thinking about pantheism. I know I've mentioned in a previous video that I'm very interested in pantheism from what little I know about it. It seems to resonate with me. Um, and it might be the label that I'm looking for to actually describe what I believe. A very quick, you know, two second term that I can use if someone asks me what I believe in, I can just go pantheistic paganism, solitary witch. Boom! Got it. <laughs> um, so I. I was watching some videos, some really excellent videos by an excellent witch, which I'll include below. Um, she has a series of four videos um, about pantheism. Now these videos are kind of old on her channel, I think they're from 2012, but I stumbled upon them and um, they really helped me, as, as well as um, Anne Orga's video talking about pantheism. I think she has a couple. I'll include all the videos I've found about pantheism <laughs> in the description box below if you're interested and just want to check it out. Um, so these thoughts, I, these thoughts about what I believe, I've, I've been having trouble lately figuring out what resonates with me as far as what exists outside of my brain and what exists within me. <laughs> um, so questions of reality, subjectivity, um, even tools. So, for example, this smoky quartz, which I use for grounding and protection and um, getting shit done kind of crystal. Is it inherently those powers? Or does it inherently have those characteristics? Or is it a symbol that I use to physically manifest those characteristics? I don't know if I'm making, making this clear. And I, I have a feeling that the answer lies, like most answers do, somewhere in the middle. Um, so I've been trying to really figure this shit out. <laughs> I, for those of you who might be fairly new to my channel, I, I am a fairly new witch. I actually, I started on this path one year ago, about this time last year, and I actually celebrated my very first ritual on Samhain of last year. Um, I am not a Wiccan. I don't follow any single distinct path. Um, Another thing I need to check out is actually chaos magic, because that, from what little I know about it, also resonates with me. Um, so that's another thing for me to add to my list of things to investigate. <laughs> but for now, pantheism. And I, anyway, I wrote down in my kind of working journal some thoughts. So what is my paganism? What is paganism and my witchy practice, what are they for me? And this is me talking about me, okay? Um, it's not earth-based, and I say that <laughs> meaning that I don't believe in the human nature split. I am nature. That kind of comes along with pantheism. Um, nature is within me and without me. The universe, nature, those terms are synonymous. Existence, all those terms are synonymous with me. I am the universe. The universe exists within me and without me. Um, and that means human activity is nature or is natural as well. That includes what environments, environmentalists might call environmental degradation. And um, the witch Catherine Maddox, I think is her name, the one, the witch whose videos I mentioned before, she, the ones that I'm going to include below, 
she talks about, I think the last video in her four video series about pantheism talks about environmentalism as a concept. And I have to say I agree with her. Um, environmentalism is good in general. It's better than just destroying the environment. But unfortunately, I think it maintains that human nature dichotomy. And that dichotomy can be very dangerous. It just perpetuates that dichotomy and could lead to further injustice um, and eventual self-destruction. <laughs> because let's, let's be real, if we're destroying the environment, let's take climate change, for example. Because my, my husband's dissertation topic has to do with climate change. Um, it's kind of presumptuous to say that we need to save the planet. The planet was here three, four billion years before we arrived. The planet will continue existing after we're gone. We don't need to save the planet. We need to save ourselves <laughs> from ourselves. Um, so I don't know. I was just thinking about that human nature split about justice um, how justice has to come from within. I, I do not... I don't want to believe in some sort of divine justice. And this is kind of a slippery topic which I haven't fully developed um, because it could slip into things like destiny and fate and blah blah blah, but even though I, I admit that the idea of divine justice, be it karma or the law of three or justice from some god or whatever, even though it's a very great idea and it brings a lot of people solace and comfort, since we do live in such an unjust world, I, I think viewing justice as being sourced from something without, from, from without, from outside of ourselves is also dangerous because it kind of takes the responsibility off our shoulders and puts it on something else. Um, that's why I think all of this is tied together. My, my version of paganism, my thoughts on pantheism, my thoughts on environmentalism, my thoughts on justice, when it boils down to justice, it has to be something that we hold ourselves accountable for. Um, it's one of the reasons why I kind of hate the idea that Christianity propagated that, you know, the poor will be the first in line in heaven. So it's kind of teaching the poor, just suck it up for now because when you die, things are going to be great. <laughs> This life matters too. It's not just after I die, you know. Um, and the suffering of the poor, taking this kind of Christian example, it's not their destiny. It's not... It's not something that they should just endure until they can go party with Jesus in heaven or whatever. Suffering more... At least human suffering, human-caused suffering, it's... It's caused by people, yeah. <laughs> it's caused by greed, and it's caused by lack of accountability. It's caused by distrust. It's caused by ignorance. Ignorance related to fear. So anyway, I'm rambling, but I've been ruminating on these topics this morning. Pantheism, my paganism, um, the human nature or human universe split. Um, also, how, how I was thinking about how I could make sense of materiality and transcendence. So, the material existence and the transcendent. Something in between. Both at the same time. Um, actually, valuing material existence 
Um, that's one of the reasons why I turned to paganism, because that's another thing I hated about Christianity. I was raised Roman Catholic, by the way. Just saying that this life is just something you have to get through in order for the next life. Um, no. <laughs> I refuse. Anyway, I'm sorry if this is a rambly video, but I just felt like rambling. Um, so... So that kind of leads me to my ideas about working with deities. Um, I've kind of shied away from working with specific deities, like culturally specific deities, like uh, the Greek pantheon, or the Egyptian pantheon, or the Norse pantheon, or um, the gods and gods, the orishas of Santeria, or anything like that. Um, and even if you look at my altar upstairs, you'll notice I don't have any humanoid representations on my altar at all. Everything's very abstract. <laughs> um, and I think for a while I found comfort in that because I was afraid to work with specific deities because I didn't believe that they existed. Like existed as in sentient beings that are separate from my consciousness. Like the Christian God, for example, something independent and transcendent. Um, I don't view the divine or the sacred that way. Um, so I kind of veered away from polytheism and I actually resonated more with atheists than I did with very strict or hard polytheistic pagans. <laughs> um, but now that I, I'm developing this new idea of what deity is or could be for me, for me, let me stress that, I'm, I'm kind of making my way around the curve back to being more open to the idea of working with deities and understanding deities as s archetypes, as specific manifestations of the universal consciousness or universal existence. Um, even specific aspects of myself because I am both independent but also um, at one with that universal consciousness, the all or divinity, um, things like that. So I'm exploring this more and I'm actually kind of excited to work more with more um, anthropomorphized images of deity, specific aspects of deity. Like uh, I'm very drawn to the version of Guadalupe. Um, I love that she's syncretic. I love that she is a product of colonization. Not that colonization was a good process at all, but I'm very drawn to the fact that she was created for, but also by a people who are oppressed and who use her to this day to help fight oppression. I have an academic article published about the version of Guadalupe. <laughs> um, so, she would be an aspect of the Divine Feminine that I would be interested in working with. Um, I've also already uh, worked with Michael the Archangel, and maybe this is some of my Catholic upbringing coming out, but I kind of like the idea of going back and reusing those Catholic images and saints for my pagany purposes. I'm still trying to figure all this out. Anyway, um, so yeah. Pantheism, what does paganism mean for me within a pantheistic perspective? Uh, working with deities, specific deities, how do I understand them? How can I relate with them? Um, again, within a pantheistic perspective. Um, how do I understand the material and the transcendent? Uh, those are the things I, those are the marbles I got rolling around in my head right now. <laughs> 
Um, another thing I want to touch on is I have, as of today, today's Tuesday, I don't know when I'm going to have this uploaded, but as of today, I have 74 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Thanks to, thank you to everybody who has given me a shout out. Thanks to everybody who's just stumbled on my channel and thought that I was worth listening to. Just thank you guys so much. I learned so much from everybody on YouTube. I love the variety of perspectives. I, I hope I never come across as like, this is how things really are. You have to believe everything like I do. I hope I don't come across like that because I really, I hate dogmatism. I hate absolutism. I think diversity is always better than uh, absolutism when it comes to things like spirituality because it's just people can have different opinions but it's so it's very productive to encounter people with different opinions because it either could help you change and grow or it could help you formulate ways to defend your position which always strengthens your your beliefs um, so I, I love the diversity on uh, the diversity that paganism as an umbrella term allows. It's a very beautiful thing. Um, it's one of the reasons why I turned towards it, why I found safety within it, and why I think it's helping me grow as a person, um, as a homo spiritualis. <laughs> So thank you guys. Thanks to everybody who subscribed. I'm still thinking about the possibility of a giveaway um, if I reach to 100 subscribers. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how, how far we can get this. But um, And another thing, uh, the last thing I'll ramble about, I promise, because I'm approaching 20 minutes. Um, my Samhain plans. I'm going to make a separate video about this, but this year has been particularly <sighs> deathy. <laughs> and I say that understanding that death is hard, but it's also a beautiful and necessary thing. Um, my grandfather died in June, and then in August, my parents and I went up to New Hampshire to bury my grandmother's ashes. So it's been a very deathy year um, with themes of transitions but also closure and catharsis. So I'm going to talk about that more as Samhain approaches. Um, I already have uh, my altar starting. I'm starting to set it up. Um, I just have to get some offerings that I want to give death itself. but. Um, yeah, I'll talk about that more. So, thanks to everybody who's made it this far in my Tuesday ramblings. <laughs> and, um, yeah, blessed be everybody. <laughs>